Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you all how to add emulators to your original Xbox. More specifically, the 9 most popular emulators for the Xbox, in my opinion. And for those of you that are here looking for a specific emulator, I'll leave a timestamp to everything down below, that way you can just skip ahead to that. And lastly, at the end of the video, I'll be covering some specific settings for emulators that I think will give us all problems later on down the road. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So really the only site we're going to be utilizing here today is gamebrew.org. This has all the emulators we're basically going to be looking for. There are other sites, but I found this one to have most of the emulators up to date. But I'm pretty much just going to start from the top and work my way to the bottom. And I'll go over each individual emulator as I get to them. But uh, starting with a NES emulator, we have Nestopia. So I'm going to right click and just open this in a new tab. And then I'm going to go to download. After that, we'll close that. And then after that, we'll go to the next one, which seems to be PSX emulator, which is a PlayStation 1 emulator. So I'm going to right click, open in a new tab, and we're going to hit download on that. Now, PlayStation 1 emulation is a little spotty. There is a compatibility list that you can check out here on this site. Uh, if you scroll down, it is in a little text format here, but I think it's a little easier to see if you open up the PDF. So if you just download this real fast, We'll go in here, open it up, and uh, let's see if I can make this a little bigger for everyone to see. That's a lot better. So if you go in here, you can see a compatibility list of every game that works with the PlayStation 1 currently, because obviously it's still an emulator. It's running on an original Xbox. It's not going to be the best. So I would reference this list just to make sure if there's any games you're looking for specifically that are on here. That way you can make sure it plays and you don't waste your time installing this for nothing. Moving on though, we're gonna go back to here and exit out of that. Next up will be the Nintendo 64 emulator, Surreal 64. So just right click and open that in a new tab and hit download. It's gonna take you to another site. Just scroll down a little bit and hit download again. And one more time up in the corner, just hit download and that should take care of everything. Try that one more time unless, did it work? Did it not work? There we go. I think it worked. So let's back out of this now. Uh, once again, with N64 emulation, there is another compatibility list. Both this and the PlayStation 1 compatibility list are a little bit out of date. If you have anything more recent, let me know in the comments down below and I'll update the links in the description with the newer compatibility lists. But anyways, back to Nintendo 64. There is a lot of playable games with this that I think we can go through here. And at least with this list, it tells you uh, like the best settings to play it on. There's even comments telling you, you know, if the audio is running bad or what exactly is running wrong in the game. And everything highlighted in red is obviously not playable. Yellow is like meh and then green is pretty good. So today for me, for example, I'm going to go with Mystical Ninja starring Gomon. So it tells you what settings to play on. Uh, every setting will be different. Doesn't mean these settings are going to be set in stone for you. So I'll show you how to adjust those later on when we work on this in the video. But let's continue on and head back over to the emulator list. Uh, next up's going to be Neo Genesis. Now, this is a Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, Sega CD, Mega CD, Sega Master System, Game Gear emulator. So pretty much an all-in-one for Sega minus the Saturn, I believe. So I'm going to right click open a new tab and hit download. You're gonna be seeing this a lot for all the emulators we're downloading today. It's pretty much gonna be the same. Um, closing out of this, the next one will be the SNES Super Nintendo emulator. Right click SNES 9 box here and hit download. What else we got? Uh, that's good. So now we have the Atari 7800 and the Atari 2600. Personally, I'm gonna be doing the 2600, but the installation for the 7800 will be the same. So I'm just gonna right click and open this one. Go to download. Uh, next up we have Neo Geo CD. Go to download. And there are other emulators on here, like there is a Sega Saturn emulator, it just runs poo poo, and that's why I'm showing you guys the most popular ones in my opinion that are working pretty well. 
Uh, moving on to handhelds, we have the X-Boy Advance, which is a GBA, GBC emulator. So I'm going to open that up. Hit download. What else we got? Uh, so there's a Nintendo DS emulator, but again, it really doesn't run that well. And we have MAME, so that's for arcade games. We'll go ahead and download that. Yeah, let's see how many we got here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I think we're all set. We're just going to wait for these to finish. So let's just give this a moment to wrap up. All right. So skipping ahead, I have the downloads all completed. What we're going to start doing is extracting them all. Uh, I'm just going to highlight everything. Go to right click and extract each archive to separate folder. Let this finish up. And then we can delete all these zip files. Now, you can see on the left hand side, I have one ROM picked out for every single emulator we're going to be doing today. And another cool thing about the site we downloaded everything from is that in it included uh, older versions of every emulator that we picked. So this one's the most recent version of the Atari 2600. And there's an old versions folder, including obviously old versions of the emulator. So I think that's really neat. And it's like that for every download. The only downside is we'll have to go through and extract the ones that we want. So. Uh, I'll start off at the top with PlayStation 1, and we're going to take this latest version here for V23, so I'm just going to go to Extract 2, and just let this finish. Once that's done, just go back to Downloads, and we'll head over to the NES, which we're going to use the latest on this as well, so just right-click, go to Extract 2. Head back to downloads. We have Surreal 64, which is N64 emulator. And this one looks like it's all set already. So let's head back to downloads. This is our Sega emulator. Head back in here. Now we're not going to be doing the one that says fixed. We're going to be doing just the uh, B10 zip here. So right click and do extract two. Head back to downloads. Uh, we have our Super Nintendo. Now with this, I already know the latest version doesn't have the best user interface. So I'm going to go to the older versions and I'll select the most recent of the older versions. So I'm going to right click and go to extract two and back into the downloads folder. And we have X boy advance, which is our game boy emulator. We're going to do the most recent. So right click and extract two. Head back over to downloads again. We're just going to be doing this a few times. Neo Rain, which is our Neo Geo emulator. So right click, extract two. Our Atari 2600. So right click that, extract two. Head back over to downloads. And then we have MAME. And we're going to do this first one, the anniversary. Right click, extract two. And I think that's all of them. So now I'm pretty sure we're good to go. So now we can finally start FTPing everything over to the console. So let's open up FileZilla, type in our IP address of our Xbox. So 192.168.1.9, that's what it is for me. Uh, username is Xbox, password is Xbox, and the port number is 21. Just gonna hit enter, press okay. We're gonna go into the E folder. And then we're going to go, actually, we don't have an emulation folder, so we're going to create one. So right click, go to create directory, and we're going to go to emulators. So we're going to type that in, press OK, and then we can open up this folder. And this is where we're going to drag and drop all of those files that we just extracted. So let me just head over to my downloads. And now just go down in a row from here and we'll start uploading these to the Xbox. So we'll go with MAME first. We have the anniversary, anniversary release two. And this is the information we actually want. So let's back up one folder, right click, and we're gonna upload this to the emulators folder on the Xbox. Let's minimize that. We'll go over to Neo Gen Plus, which is our Sega emulator. Open this up. And basically what we're going to do is find all of these extras folders, uh, including like a ROMs folder. Then we're going to back up one and include just that main folder to be uploaded on the Xbox. So go back. We'll do it again with the NES emulator. Go to Nestopia X21. There's another folder. And this is the folder we want. So upload. Do the same thing with 
PlayStation. We got V23, and that's the folder we want. Upload. Super Nintendo. Now, we did do an old version for this one, so I'm going to open that up. We got V6, and that's the one we want. So right click and upload. The real 64, which is the N64 emulator. Open this up. That looks good as is, so highlight, upload. Exploit Advance. And this is the one we want here, the V25B1 upload. Uh, Neo Rain, open that up. This is the one we want. And Atari, we got this one, and that's the one we want. So upload. So now we have like 9,000 files queued here. So we're going to let these all upload. It's probably going to take about five minutes or so. So I will see you here in a second. Okay, now you can see everything finished here. We have all nine of our emulators now on the Xbox. Now we just have to get the games onto them. So let's start in order of all the games I have here on the left. I actually pick them all out ahead of time. So the first game I have is Crash Bandicoot. This is for the PlayStation 1. So we're gonna go into PCS Xbox V23. We're gonna open this up. We're gonna go into PSX CDs and we're gonna to toss in Crash Bandicoot. And just to show you what's inside, we have the .bin and .q file. So I'm just gonna drag that right into here. Now the PlayStation 1 also needs BIOS. So let's back up here and there's a BIOS folder here. It even tells you what to place right here. So I have mine, I'm just gonna drag and drop right there. And now we'll move on to the next one. So that's gonna be, hold on, let me back up to the emulators folder. Neo Geo CD. So we're gonna go down to Neo Rain, open this up. And Neo Geo also needs BIOS. And this one actually goes directly onto the uh, root of the file. So we have the Neo CD bin in the same location as the default.xbe. Now we can go into the games folder and we'll add our game. So I have Metal Slug over here on the left. So let me just minimize this so you guys can see for now. I'm just gonna bring this over to the right and we're gonna right click and extract two. Now this emulator actually runs things in a zip format so you can leave it that way. But I just wanna show you guys something inside of the folder. So if I open this up, you have all your tracks. One thing I wanna make known is that uh, your game itself, the main name on the folder should be short and sweet. Uh, no brackets, no parentheses, none of that. Like I just have Metal Slug, that's how your game should be. Inside you have all your audio tracks most likely. You want this to also be named the same. Metal Slug, no brackets, no uh, version number, nothing like that. Just make it short and sweet along with the track for the audio. Uh, I believe this emulator reads MP3 as well as .wav, so you're good there. Uh, but if you also have your metal slug.q and ISO, if you right click the ISO and go to extract here, this is going to give you a bunch of other files. And we have one specific one, the IPL.txt. This is what the emulator is going to read in order to start the game. So I just wanted that to be known ahead of time. So let me go ahead and open up the file Zilla and we're going to drag and drop metal slug right into there. Next up, let me just head back to the emulator folder. We have Mystical Ninja, that's an N64 game. So that's Surreal 64, let's open that up. And go into the ROMs folder and we're just gonna toss Mystical Ninja right in here. Next up, heading back to that folder, we have Pitfall, that's Atari 2600, so that's Z26. We're gonna open that up go into A26 ROMs, and we're gonna to toss Pitfall right into there. Next up, we have The Mask. That's a Super Nintendo game, so that's SNES 9 Xbox. Open that up, go into SNES ROMs, and toss that right into there. Notice that these are all zipped, so that's pretty cool. You don't have to extract most of them. Uh, head back over to this again, we have Pokemon Silver, which is a Game Boy Color game, and Pokemon Fire Red, which is a Game Boy Advance game. So I'm gonna go into X Boy Advance, and you can make a separate folder if you want for Game Boy Color games and Game Boy Advance games, but I'm just gonna use the same folder for GBA ROMs here. So I'm gonna open this up, and I'm gonna drag both Silver and Fire Red into the same folder. 
Uh, what's next? Go to emulators, and we have Comic Zone. Comic Zone is a Sega Genesis emulator, so that's Neo Gen Plus, uh, S Gen ROMs, and then we can just drag it right into there. Head back to emulators, and we have Space Invaders. That is a MAME game, so we're gonna open that up. Go into ROMs, and toss that right in. And lastly, we have Super Mario Bros. 3. That is a original Nintendo game, so that's Nestopia. And go into, where is the there, ROMs folder? And we're going to toss in Super Mario Bros. 3. The last thing I'll say, because we're all done adding games, the emulators are all set, we just have to let everything transfer. Uh, some of these uh, emulators offer a artwork folder, which let you put the cover art for your games in. Uh, most of the time, if you want to do that, you just have to add your game and your photo. The photo usually needs to be somewhere between 512 by 512 or smaller. And the cover art name needs to exactly 100% match the title of the game. So if it's Super Mario World on the game, it's got to be Super Mario World on the photo. Other than that, we should be all set. So let's head over to the Xbox and we'll start testing some things out. And I'll show you guys some things you guys should need to know. All right, now that we're back on the Xbox, we can check these emulators out. Just make sure you restarted your Xbox so all the changes took effect. But if I open this up, you should see we now have Atari 2600, MAME, Neo Geo, and all of them have their cool little uh, thumbnails here, except for a few. Super Nintendo doesn't have one. PS1 uh, doesn't have one. I think it's just these two, actually. Uh, but I'm just going to go over the emulators that I think people will run into trouble with. Atari 2600, I think you'll be all set, no problem. MAME, no problem. Neo Geo, no problem, no problem. Uh, Game Boy, this will be the first one. So let's go ahead and press A to open this up. Off rip, the first thing you might notice on a lot of these is that you have a lot of loud music that starts up. It's different for each emulator, but if you want to turn it off, you can uh, left click the stick and then press pause, unpause music. Or if you want, you can use the right thumbstick on the Xbox controller and you can just move it left or right to control the volume. But pressing B on that, we're gonna go down to select game. And I'm just gonna show you the issue before I show you the fix. So I'm gonna boot up Pokemon Fire Red. This is a Game Boy Advance game. Give this a moment. And if I press the A button or start button or anything really, we're gonna get a message that pops up on the screen that says the 1M sub circuit board is not installed. This will let you not save your game. So I'm gonna go ahead and just right click the stick and we're gonna to go to exit game. In order to fix this, highlight the game of your choice. So like Pokemon Fire Red for me, I'm gonna press the X button. It's gonna bring up the settings for the game. Initially, when you start a game for the first time, this should pop up, but just scroll down and go to flash size, set this to 128K, save type, set this to flash, and then just press the B button. The game should auto start from here, and we're just gonna check the issue one more time. And we didn't get that message this time, so we're good to go. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the next emulator. Next up, we have the PlayStation 1, so I'm gonna open this up. And really, there isn't any settings that you have to tweak on this. I just wanted to show you the overall performance of it. So I'll just give it a moment to load up. And once again, if you're not feeling the music, you can left click on the stick and hit pause music. And then I'm going to go to select game, Crash Bandicoot, and you can select either the .bin or the .q file. It'll load for either. And once you see this configuration screen, you don't have to change anything. So I'm just going to press B and let's see what we got. Okay, so it's starting off pretty good. We're at 30 frames per second. The audio sounds pretty good, not too choppy. Okay, so we're at eight frames so far right now. Then so it looks like we're cruising at about 10 frames and a little a little below that roughly 10 i mean it's playable it's it's not too awful I'm, i mean i'm navigating around just fine i'm still alive for now till i schmurder myself but i think i'm done with this emulator now so just reference the compatibility list for all the games that you want to play for this one but you can see here that it is running pretty good so I'm, let's return to the emulator list 
Next up is Surreal 64. This is the Nintendo 64 emulator. And the only reason I think this will be confusing is because I think everybody will have a question about the plugins. So to my understanding, Surreal 64 is basically a emulator that houses other emulators. So you can see I have Mystical Ninja being picked up. So I'm gonna press the A button. And you're gonna see all the launch options that we have here. Launch with uh, 1964, x85 x11 pj64 14 and 16 and ultra hle and each one that you select here has their own individual plugins rice 10 31 560 611 612 so really it's, it's kind of hard to figure out which one is good for you i was playing this earlier so let me just show you the settings that i have so i'm just going to back up here i'm going to press x for surreal setup on the game and if we scroll down we can go into emulator settings and we can select our emulator. So PJ6414 works for me. Video plugin 531 works for me. Um, I guess I'll change the audio plugin to 1964 audio. And the RSP plugin will change to M64 plus HLE. After that, I'm just gonna press the Y button to launch. And it should remember your settings from here on out when you select the game if you did it this way. All right, and it seems like it's running pretty good. Let's see how the loading screen goes from transitioning from one to another. Um, takes a little long there, but not too bad. I thought it'd be a little more choppy, but really pretty good. A uh, little bit of frame rate loss there when I was hitting, but now it's not happening. So honestly, I can't complain. This game specifically isn't that bad. I think Super Smash runs good. Mario Kart runs good. Pretty much all the games that people want to run good do. Unfortunately though, I can't say the same for Star Fox. I'm pretty sure that doesn't run. But uh, anyways, that's pretty much it for the Nintendo 64 emulator. Uh, it's really just gonna be a reference game between checking the compatibility list and using your own personal time to try to configure your own settings. There are people online who put their own configurations out there. So you could also look up to see what other people have as well. Well, let's go ahead and move on to our last emulator. So lastly, we have Neo Geo CD, and I don't really think anybody will have a, an issue on this emulator because it runs pretty smoothly. I just want uh, everyone to know how to actually run the game. So once you're in here, go to load game, select Metal Slug, and you would think you're gonna select the Metal Slug.Q, but you're actually gonna select the IPL.txt. So press A on that, give this a moment, and your game should load right up. So I'm just gonna go to Arcade Mission, hit yes. And here we go. And everything's running fine. This actually is running really smooth. I'm surprised at this. It's not choppy at all. Now there is one more thing I wanna show you guys before I end the video, and that's just how to use some of the shortcuts and access some of the features on here, just in case you get lost and don't know what to do at some point. So let's switch over to that. All right, so now we're in a Super Nintendo emulator and I had to do this because Neo Geo doesn't have the same features as everyone else, if that makes sense. But should you wanna access the main menu, whether it be through Super Nintendo or through the Sega Genesis emulator or anything like that, usually right clicking the stick will bring up a sub menu and give you an option to exit game, uh, do certain configurations. I think you can configure controller too and your buttons and you have options to reset the console as well. So another thing you can do, should you wanna to return to the home screen of your Xbox, you can hit the left trigger, right trigger, back button, and black button, and this will take you back to the Xbox home screen. I think it does kind of like a reset on your console. And here we are. So that's pretty much it. I think I covered just about everything. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. But I hope you guys enjoy all the gaming you're going to be doing on your original Xbox, and I will see you guys in the next one. Adios. Thank <music> you.